Hi, this is Cynthia Lumen with Toymaker Press, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make a natural, non-toxic finish for wood toys. This is an environmentally friendly, child-safe, non-toxic finish that can easily be wiped clean with a damp cloth, and it's durable enough for active play. These two trucks were made using plans from our Build Big Wood Toy Trucks book available on our website. This truck on my left does not have the finish applied to it, whereas this truck on my right does, and you can see how it gives, the finish gives it a nice warm glow and it's also very soft to the touch. This finish has been a favorite of toy makers for years because it's so easy to make and so easy to apply. And you can quickly repair worn surfaces to like new condition in just a few minutes. I'm sure you're anxious to learn how to make this miracle finish so let's get started. To make this finish, you're going to need some common materials and supplies. First, you're going to need a pint of mineral oil. I bought this at my local Walmart, but you can also get it at any, any drugstore, and it's very inexpensive. Second, you're going to need a block of beeswax. This is a one pound block. I bought this at my local hobby store, but it's also available on the internet if you don't have a hobby store in your area. Those are the two ingredients you're going to be using to make this finish. The supplies you'll need is a one quart saucepan, a half cup measuring cup, a butcher knife to make shavings of the wax, a spoon to stir the mixture in the pan, and a thermometer. I want you to specifically get this thermometer. It has a clip on it. A lot of kitchens have this thermometer that I'm holding here. This is a common meat thermometer, but it has no clip on it. Don't use this kind of thermometer. This is the kind of thermometer I want you to use. It has a clip on it. It was very inexpensive. I also bought it at my local Walmart. And the reason I want you to have the clip on it is because when we put it into the saucepan to monitor the temperature of the of the mixture. We do not want the tip to touch the bottom of the pan, so it's really important it has a clip. And you'll need a container to pour the, the finish in when you're done mixing it up. This is a very inexpensive uh, plastic kind of Tupperware container that I also found at my local Walmart, and it has a screw top lid which makes it very nice for storing the finish. You'll also need a roll of paper towels to use while you're working and also to apply the finish to the toy. And finally, you'll just need a cutting board. So let's go over to the stove and get started and we can start working on this finish together. As you can see, I've already shaped quite a bit of the beeswax into a pile on my cutting board. You'll notice that the shavings are quite small because the beeswax is very hard. And I've been packing the beeswax into my half cup measuring cup. I'm going to go ahead and continue to add more shavings into the cup and packing it in firmly. And we're going to add enough shavings so that the top of the measuring cup is just a little bit rounded. We want to be sure we have enough beeswax in this mixture. So don't be scared to add just a little bit more than, than a level half cup. Before we add the mineral oil and the beeswax to the pan, we're going to take the thermometer and we're going to attach it to the side of the pan. I've already adjusted my clip so that when I slip this thermometer in, the tip of the thermometer is only about a quarter of an inch from the bottom of the pan. The reason this is important is because when we cook and mix up this mixture over heat, we're going to be monitoring this temperature so that it does not go any higher than 150 degrees. If the temperature goes higher than 150 degrees, it can cause a flash fire, which is extremely dangerous. So you'll be wanting to watch that thermometer through the whole process. Also, we want it to not touch the bottom of the pan and be up about a quarter of an inch because we want to be measuring the temperature of the mixture only and not the temperature of the pan. So let's go ahead and start adding the ingredients to the pan. I've already started adding some of the mineral oil, so I'm just going to go ahead and add the rest of this bottle until I've added the entire pint of mineral oil. 
and then I'm going to take the beeswax flakes and loosely sprinkle them in the mineral oil. And I'm going to set my burner at low. Take my spoon and start to stir the mixture. All the while I'm going to be monitoring the thermometer to make sure the temperature does not rise above 150 degrees. If I notice that it's beginning to rise over 150 degrees, you can take the pan off the burner and just set it aside for a few minutes until it cools down and then bring it back onto the heat and start stirring some more. I've been stirring my mixture for about 13 minutes. As you can see, it's completely clear and the beeswax flakes are completely dissolved in the mineral oil. Now, your, your time to take to stir the mixture might actually be faster or might take a little longer. I also went ahead and turned up my burner just a little bit because I found after the first five minutes, my flakes weren't melting at all and the temperature on my thermometer wasn't rising at all. So as I adjusted my burner, I continued to stir, but I also continued to look at the thermometer and monitor the temperature to make sure that that temperature is rising, but it does not go above 150 degrees. So I'm completely clear here with the mixture. I'm going to go ahead and set it off the burner, turn off my heat, and I've got my container here ready to pour the mixture into. When I remove my spoon, you'll just want to have a paper towel handy so that it doesn't drip. Now, this mixture is 150 degrees, so it will scald you if you're not careful. When you pour the mixture into your container, you don't want to be holding the container because the container will become too hot. So I've set the container here on my cutting board, and then I'm just going to pour it into the container. Looks like I have a little bit of extra, so I'm just going to set that aside. And I'm going to let it set up. So now we have the mixture, and it's completely cooled, and as you can see, it's formed a solid paste. To speed the cooling process, I placed this container in the freezer of my refrigerator, and it took about 30 minutes for it to set up. You can let it cool on your counter, but it will take about an hour to two hours for it to form a solid paste. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, we have a couple trucks here from our Build Big Wood Toy Trucks book that's available on our website at toymakerpress.com. And the fire engine on the right has been finished with the paste, and the, the semi-trailer on the left has not been finished. And you can visually see the differences just even looking at them in this video. On the left, the wood is unfinished, yet the, on the right, it has so much um, more warmer color and it's very soft to the touch. Uh, one of the things that we really like about using the paste too is that on unfinished wood, there's a chance for children to get splinters. The wood can sometimes feel a little bit rough when it's cut across against the grain. But when you apply the paste, the wood really softens and the risk of getting splinters just becomes non-existent. So I'm going to go ahead and apply a little bit more paste to this fire engine because I haven't completely finished covering it with the paste yet. On this ladder here, I'm just going to go ahead and take my paper towel pick up a little bit of the paste with my paper towel and then just rub it, rub the paste into the part and you're going to have extra pieces of the paste that won't rub in completely. When that happens just take the dry part of your paper towel and just wipe it off, wipe it off to clean it off to get all the paste off. What's really nice about this paste too is that it has a really wonderful honey smell because of the beeswax. So there I've gone ahead and applied a little bit more to this particular ladder and some of these areas are a little bit difficult to get to. 
like the ladders, the uh, area around the rungs, or maybe even around the wheel wells and the axles. In that case, I went ahead and purchased a very inexpensive brush from our local Home Depot. This only cost a few dollars. And I just go ahead and pick up some of the wax with this brush and just paint it into every single nook and cranny, every little exposed area of the wood, and just keep rubbing at it till the paste gets worked all the way into the wood. And then you can still take your dry paper towel and just give it that last wipe to just clean off any extra paste that could still be on the toy. So there you go. Um, in just under a few hours, we were able to mix up a very simple, inexpensive, durable, non-toxic, child-safe, environmentally friendly paste finish for your wood toys that is very popular at craft shows and for toys that you give as gifts for small children. Thanks for watching and happy toy making from Toymaker Press.